Our opening song is Let Us Break Bread Together on Our Knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And as the song teaches us, let us ask God to have mercy on us. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And let us listen with the ear of the heart. Wisdom, be attentive. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly earlier. When you read this, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to human beings in other generations, as it has been at his as it has now been revealed to his apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this I became a minister by the gift of God's grace that was granted me in accord 
with the exercise of his power. To me, the very least of all the holy ones, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ and to bring to light for all what is the plan of the mystery hidden from ages past in God who created all things so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord. And as and he has been my savior with joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations, make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Alleluia, alleluia. Stay awake. For you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his service to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating shall be beaten only lightly. 
Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, brothers and sisters. The first reading today was from the beautiful letter to the Ephesians, which is a theologically very well-developed letter and was probably written more toward 100 AD. In the letter, we heard these words that we have access we have access to the mystery of God through Christ our Lord. That's a very reassuring phrase, isn't it? That as human beings, we have access to the mystery of God's love, his power, authority, and goodness through Christ our Lord. So I want to explore this morning a word that I coined, throughness. And I want to give you a few examples of throughness. I'm a pretty good speller. You know, I really don't need spell check. How many good spellers are here? How many bad spellers are here? Oh, the rest of you. Well, I'm a pretty good speller. And I'm a good speller because of my second grade teacher, Mrs. Sherfy. She used to dance and sing and cajole, teaching us how to spell properly. And so I learned how to spell well through Mrs. Sherfy. Now, when I was nine years old, I started playing the violin, and in the public school system, we had this wonderful dynamic woman, Mrs. Cooter, and she had such a gift with young people. And she had about 150 kids playing the violin. Isn't that amazing? It was like a violin epidemic. And so I learned how to play the violin well through Mrs. Cooter, her talent and her enthusiasm. And in my seminary years, I had three mentors, Father John, Father Rich, and Kathy, who taught me how to pray more deeply. So I learned how to pray more deeply through my mentors. And if we think about it, everything we have and everything we've learned has come through others. You say amen to that? And if we really celebrate throughness, we come very close to a theology of gift. I can do nothing alone. Everything is through others. And the good news is people can learn virtues through us, through our word and example. Perhaps one question today is, what do people learn through us? What kind of legacy are we creating? Do people have access to the mystery of God through you, through me? Well, my batting average is probably around 265, but I'm working on getting it up to 300. So this notion of throughness is at the heart of the Eucharist. At the climax of the Eucharistic prayer, what does the priest say? Through him, with him, in him. It is through the sacraments that we enter into the love of God. It is through Jesus Christ that we have access to the mystery of God. 
If we want to grow in faith, hope, and love, we have to know Jesus more deeply each day. And my friends, at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, when I say through him, I'd like you to think about all the people who have made your life richer, deeper, more alive. Maybe you could think of especially your parents, your parents, through whom you received the gift of life. And we celebrate the deep reality that we have access to the mystery of God through Christ our Lord. And the church says, Amen. Let us stand. God of the vulnerable, we pray for those who lack the basic capacity to function fully in society. We pray to the Lord. For the working poor who cannot rise out of poverty, we pray to the Lord. For single parents, foster children, and those without adequate education, we pray to the Lord. For the healing of all those suffering with coronavirus, and may we find a vaccine readily, we pray to the Lord. For those suffering from natural disasters, especially the wildfires in California and Colorado, we pray to the Lord. For wisdom and discernment as we prepare for election day, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died and for those who miss them. God, loving God, God of the vulnerable, bless us with grace and fortitude to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with you through Christ our Lord. Let us stand praying together that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, 
Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Felipe, our Bishop, Victor, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Dear Father, lovingly remember all who have died in your mercy and today we remember especially Jarrell Robertson. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, help us to recognize 
that all is gift. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God Abba, dear Father, and so we have the courage to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for your presence today, brothers and sisters. And don't forget, this Friday, October 23rd, at 9 a.m. on Facebook, Father Anthony, Father Joe, and I will be talking about how to find grace and courage in this time of pandemic. It's really a lovely conversation, if I may say so myself. So Friday, October 23rd, 9 a.m. And also, I forgot to mention one thing. Now, true Father Joe, I now eat all my Indian food spicy. I was a mild guy for years. So uh, Father Joe's trueness has left a lasting impression on my palate. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Hail Mary. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. 